Hello friends, welcome back to S3 Cloud Hub. In this video, we will talk about Docker Container and Docker Engine. So without any further ado, let's get start the session. First of all, let us talk about, what is a Docker Container? So, a Docker Container is a loosely isolated environment, running within a host machine's kernel, that allows us to run application-specific code, along with all of its dependencies. All right. Now that we have our definition of a Docker container. Now let's dive into some of the concepts that the definition brings up. So, let's discuss how Docker relates to a kernel. By answering first, what is a kernel? So in operating systems, like Mac OS, Windows or Linux, the kernel is a software at the core of the machine, with complete control over the entire system. It handles reading input and output from various software applications, and also turning that data into instructions for the CPU to execute. This core software also handles things like memory, and devices like keyboards, monitors and speakers for the entire operating system. So how do Docker and the kernel relate? Docker must run on top of a machine kernel, in order to provide its features. This original kernel is what we call the host machine, and you'll often hear or see the concept of the host machine, appear related to Docker. So know that this refers to the original computer, and its kernel where Docker is running. Alright, to further understand how containers work, we need to see, or rather understand the Docker engine. We just brought up the idea, the Docker can be running on top of a machine's kernel. So let's go through this more thoroughly. What exactly is running? The system in place, that handles Docker services is called the Docker engine. The engine consists of a server process to run Docker features, then an API that we can use to launch those features. And finally, a command line interface client that allows us to interact with that API as users. The server is also called the Docker daemon. A daemon in operating systems is a term to refer to processes running in the background. So the Docker daemon is running in the background without you having to directly interact with it. It runs within the kernel of the host machine. It then listens for requests from the user. We users send those requests through a command line interface that the Docker engine exposes. And then once the daemon receives those requests, it does a heavy lifting of actually creating containers. The Docker daemon is like a construction team that operates within the host machine's kernel. It has a book of blueprints per se that defines how it should create various Docker-related objects like containers, and this book of blueprints is the API, then US clients, the users of Docker can tell that team to use a specific blueprint through the command line. With that blueprint, the Docker daemon knows how to construct containers on top of host machine's kernel foundation. Now, with this diagram, let's illustrate how the Docker engine works and its relationship to containers. So here we have the elements that construct the engine and how it relates to Docker containers. Again, the engine is made mainly of that Docker daemon, managing Docker objects, the Docker command line interface, and the Docker REST API that acts as a layer between the command line and the daemon itself, to provide blueprints on how to work with Docker, and create Docker objects like containers. So this diagram illustrates an operating system, that is running Docker. The running Docker daemon sits, and operates, right on top of the host's operating system's kernel. It acts as a layer between the command line that interacts with it, as well as the containers that it creates. The command line application, which is provided by the operating system, such as a shell, like a terminal, or PowerShell in Windows, interacts with an interface provided by Docker to work with the Docker daemon. As users, again we send requests to the daemon to create containers. And as daemon receives those requests, it creates those containers within the host machine. So the main point of this diagram is to illustrate the Docker command line interface, working with the Docker daemon on top of the host machine's kernel. Let's move on and continue exploring containers. Now that we have a grasp of the Docker engine, the kernel, and the host machine, let's think about how Docker container environments actually work. The Docker engine creates these environments called Docker containers on top of the kernel where you can run application-specific code. Now, what does this environment provide? 
the environment allows, for a certain degree of loose isolation, for example the processes or running instances of a program within one container should not be able to affect the processes of another one. Also, a container environment allows for resource limitation. We can specify how much of the CPU each container is allowed to consume. Likewise, we can say that each container only has access to a maximum amount of kernel memory. This allows us to make sure certain apps don't hug too much of the host machine's kernel resources, allowing all the containers to run fairly. This loosely isolated environment then allows us to run application-specific code, meaning we can run an application within one container and then bundle all that application's dependencies within that container without having to install those dependencies on the host machine. So one of the big things about containers is that it gets its whole own file system. So all the application-specific code will exist within that container file system, including all of its libraries and dependencies. For example, if we have a node.js server running in the container, all of those node module libraries can be installed just within the container itself, without those having to be downloaded or created on the host file system. This becomes especially useful when you had multiple container environments and applications running on your system, but you won't necessarily need to support the entire environment or directories in libraries of all those applications, all within your host machine. You can just support them within their own containers. Now I hope you all guys are understand the work of Docker container and Docker engine. So guys. That's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.